the <coughs> planning board of the town of Cape Elizabeth is you may have noticed where we normally meet on the first on the third Thursday of the month, but since that happened to coincide with vacation week, uh, we're doing it on Monday of this week, so every, more people will have a chance to attend. Uh, we have three items of business on the agenda tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, first is the approval of minutes of a previous meeting from September 15, 2015. Uh, the second item is a Verizon wireless water tank antenna site plan. A Verizon Wireless is requesting site plan review to install antennas on the water tank and a 10 foot by 16 foot concrete, concrete pad supporting equipment <coughs> cabinets and a generator located at 11 Avon Road. And this will be uh, for site plan approval. And lastly, there'll be an opportunity for public comment on anything that's not on the agenda. Um, the board has received copies of the minutes from the um, September 15 meeting. Uh, are there any questions? If none, may I have a motion to approve? Jo Jonathan, second. Carol Ann, any discussion on the second in motion? All in favor? <clears throat> I will abstain since I wasn't there, but so the motion. Carries four to nothing. Um, thank you. The next item I'm going to introduce, and we'll wait till the uh, technology is caught up with us. <coughs> Excuse me. The the way we're going to go about the Verizon application is as follows. We'll begin with a presentation um, by the representative from the applicant. Uh, there will then be uh, an opportunity for public comment limited to the completeness of the application. Let me just sort of explain there are two stages in this approval process. One is that the application has to be complete, and that is meeting all the requirements of the submission requirements. The second stage is on the merits of the application, whether site plan approval should be granted or not. Uh, this evening, we will limit ourselves to completeness. Um, I'm aware that the uh, item has been has had some controversy about it over the last um, number of months, and um, so we want to give a an, another chance. We want to have a chance to hear the uh, discussion tonight on completeness. Uh, probably we will have a site viewing by the planning board, and then at the next meeting we can address the substance of the application. Um, so. The, the comments that you have tonight, if you would try very hard to limit them to completeness and not to argue the merits of the application, you'll have the, another opportunity to do that. I realize sometimes it's a little hard to draw the line where one begins and ends and the next begins, but we'll uh, ask you to do your best. Um, are we all good? We're good. Hey. Peter, can I, address, can I address one thing before we start sure. with regards to this? Um, one of the uh, emails that came in was from a Pavel Darling, who's a, uh, a butter, I believe, of the site plan. I, I know um, Mr. Darling. We went to high school together in, in, here in Cape Elizabeth. I don't think there'd be a conflict with regards to me sitting on this, but I wanted to bring that to the board's attention if they have any issues or questions. Um, uh, just because I know Pavel, we don't have any finance. We don't work together or anything like that. So just want to point that out. Well, thank you for raising that. He, and he, he's here tonight as a, as a witness and a possible speaker. Is that the... I actually do see him. There he is. So. Oh. But it, one of the emails that we received, that's right. why I brought that up. So. Right. so he's a citizen who's expressed interest in the application. Yes. I mean, obviously, we have not, I've not discussed with him any of the merits of the yeah, application I, or completeness. But I don't think it's a conflict. I just want to point it out to the board. I, I tend to agree with you. Any board members have a different point of view on that? Okay. Well, thank you for raising that, John. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, we'll start off. If, uh, sir, if you could identify yourself and, and say what you will about your application, sure. uh, I would appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott Anderson, um, and I'm here tonight with Chip Fredette. Uh, Chip and I work on local permitting for 
Verizon Wireless uh, cell phone installations in the state of Maine uh, and have done so for quite a few years. Um, what I, we had met uh, previously with the planning board for our pre-application meeting, there have been a couple of changes to the layout in part due to some of the comments from the planning board at our first meeting. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through those changes, um, go over the primary components of the project, and then talk a little bit about the completeness issues that the chairman had raised and respond to some of the comments that I know have been submitted from some of the folks in the neighborhood. Um, and then, of course, answer any questions that any of you folks may have. Um, and so I have this up on the screen for everyone. I know you have them in your packets as well. Um, whichever is easier, I'm going to start off um, by going to uh, page five, I think is probably the best one to start. So page five, uh, which is called C1 at the bottom of your plan, shows um, the, the basic uh, components of the project. Um, what we have first are three sets of antennas that are mounted to the top railing of the tank. Um, access to the site is via the existing uh, gravel driveway, which is shown on the plan. There isn't any change to that. Um, the big change has been in our prior submission, we had shown an equipment shelter roughly in this section. It was around 12 by 26 in size. Um, it contained both the backup generator and the radio equipment for the site. And we had proposed to do a kind of shingle style shed um, to, um, to kind of shield the, shield the equipment on the inside. Um, there were some comments about possibly due to the fact that most of the abutters are, live in close proximity on this side of the project to try to move the equipment shelter from here around to the back. The other thing that's been happening has been a slight change in the way Verizon Wireless is constructing their projects. Um, they are shifting with many of their sites from the old equipment shelters to um, cabinets that are mounted on um, a concrete slab outside of any structure. Um, and there are two benefits to this. One, the physical size of the equipment has now been reduced dramatically because you don't have the shell of the building around it to provide weatherproofing. The other significant change is there had been permanently mounted HVAC units to the equipment shelter to provide cooling and heating um, during the different seasons uh, for the inside of the shelter. Those units can now be eliminated and instead there are small fans associated with each one of the equipment cabinets that make sure that the air inside of this much smaller cabinet space doesn't get too hot or too cool. Um, as a result, the sound um, impacts of the project have been um, um, significantly reduced. Um, the next uh, page, which is page six on the, the PowerPoint and um, page C2 in your plan, shows a slightly blown up version um, of the, the proposal. Again, we have um, the, the equipment cabinets are mounted here. Um, the backup generator is now on the outside. It will be enclosed in a soundproofing enclosure. Um, and as it's an emergency backup generator, it will only run during power outages, and then it will be cycled and tested once a, me uh, once a week for about 20 minutes, and that's normally something we set for like 10 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, the platform has essentially has four posts in the corner, and on top of that is a roof. Um, that is the ice shield, so that if ice were to fall off the tank and the antennas and drop down, it would not cut the cables that connect the equipment shelter to the antennas, and it protects the equipment from ice fall. There are no walls to this structure. It's just kind of the roof to block uh, the ice, and there, are, are, there is a light uh, in this location and in this location, and I think in that location, that provides light on the site. Those are the only lights on site and they are motion activated. They are down directional um, and they are only triggered when the Verizon wireless technician comes onto the site if there's some sort of problem. Um, and that is roughly once a month and is normally during daytime hours. So it would only be in an emergency situation that there would be any lighting associated with the facility on at the site. Uh, the other benefit of moving the shelter from here and replacing it with the equipment is we don't need to change the existing fenced enclosure. So that will remain exactly where it is. 
Um, we have proposed to plant um, some uh, evergreen plantings along the existing fence line just to provide a, an additional uh, vegetative buffer between the project and the road. Um, as I think you saw from the, the application submission, there's significant vegetation around the site in very close proximity to the water district's property. Um, but this was one area where there is no vegetation between the tank and the road, so we've proposed to put in a series of, of trees there and, and the specs for those. Um, have been included in our application. Um, if you go to the next page on the site plan, which is C3, this gives you the kind of elevation view uh, of the project. Again, here is one at the top of the um, uh, tower is one of the three sets of antennas uh, enclosed in the shroud. Um, the cables run down the side of the tank. And here is the enclosure for the um, equipment. What we're showing here is a fence that we propose to surround this with. That's not actually necessary. It's not part. As you can see, there's a, a roof up here. There's two of the posts that are holding up the ice bridge roof over the two cabinets and the generator. Um, but we've proposed to put um, fencing in um, both uh, as a visual buffer um, and also it will further attenuate any sound coming from the, both the generator and the fans um, that are operating at the site. Trying to think. So then the, most of the rest of the, the spec plans show um, um, some of the engineering details of the different components. So I think those few views give you kind of the top view and the side view of the components. Again, we've, we've replaced the equipment shelter with some of these um, externally mounted cabinets, which are um, smaller both in size uh, and with regard to their impacts and have proposed to add some vegetation along the fence line. Um, as part of the application that we provided, we included a number of uh, attachments in response to the requirements of the site plan review ordinance. Very briefly, we, we've got tabs that walk through the application requirements. Um, we've given you a kind of a forward look to our thoughts on some of the performance standards. Um, at tab E, we provided a, a copy of our notice of lease agreement for right title and interest. Um, at tab F, uh, uh, on the issue of financial uh, capacity, we've provided Verizon Wireless's most recently consolidated income statement. The, all of these sites are financed internally with Verizon Wireless operating dollars, so there's no banks or lenders involved. Um, at tab G, we um, had our sound engineers do a sound assessment of, and we had them do it both of the fans associated with the cabinets and of the generator, even though the generator just runs in an emergency situation. Um, it's not clear that that's subject to the sound rules, but we wanted to make sure we did an assessment of the generator as well. And in the sound assessment, um, <clears throat> our engineer looked at ambient noise and the, the specs for each one of the, the, the fans and the, and the sound associated with the enclosed generator and um, describes how uh, those um, uh, pieces of equipment comply with Cape Elizabeth sound standards. Um, at tab H, we've showed a slightly amended um, uh, photo simulation. Uh, we had, I think, provided that as part of our pre-application meeting that showed the shelter. Um, that has just been modified to show the removal of the shelter and the relocation of the equipment a little bit farther behind the tank. Um, so that information was provided to give you uh, a sense of the updated, uh, update to the design and what the, the visual is from Avon Road there. And then at the final tab in I, we just had done kind of an overhead Google snapshot that shows some of the vegetation in the area, which is, um, which is significant. Um, so that's uh, kind of a basic rundown on what we had provided. Um, in Maureen's follow-up, she had sent us uh, an assessment of her review of completeness as well as the town's third-party engineer's review. Um, one thing that Maureen had, had asked for were specs on the lighting plan, and we have the specs on the individual uh, light that we've proposed to install, and I can give that to the board so that you have that. Um, what's also very important to understand is this is our standard lighting setup, um, but there's nothing magical about it. So if there is a different fixture, uh, different wattage or lumens within you know, certain reason, but we want to make sure it's safe when the technicians go out if they have to go out in an emergency situation at night. But for the most part, if there's a different fixture you would like, we can do that. 
um, we're not wedded to this. Um, it's a fixture that we have found works well because it is shielded. It can be directed down. And again, it'll be on a motion sensor. Um, so it will only be on um, when uh, the technician comes and should not be triggered by cats or squirrels or anything else that could uh, defeat the outer perimeter fencing that we have around there. So um, otherwise, no lighting on the tank whatsoever uh, or any of the other, or other equipment that we're installing. Um, we had asked for one waiver, which we had talked about at the pre-application meeting, which was for a medium density soil survey. Uh, the basis for that request, as you know in your ordinance, if there are application requirements that the applicant thinks may not be necessary for you to look at your performance standards, we've asked for a waiver of the, uh, of the requirement to do a soil study on the basis that there's obviously no wastewater, subsurface wastewater treatment system installed as part of this project, and that the impact of the concrete pad is quite minimal. And so on the basis of those reasons, we had asked for a waiver of the requirement to do the soil study. And from my review of some of the documents submitted by the third party engineer, your third party engineer uh, agreed that that was a reasonable request. Um, obviously with the understanding that you folks need to make that ultimate decision as well. Um, and then I guess the, the last thing before I take any questions is just in response to some of the uh, information and the questions that the abutters had provided on the completeness. Um, one, there was a request for some additional photos. Um, we redid the photo simulations to show what the change in design would look like. We think that when you have that, you can kind of understand what the project is going to look like from different places when you can look up and see the tank. Obviously, the color of the tank will change. It will be painted. And then there will be the antennas on the top. Uh, the equipment in the back will really only be visible from very few locations given where it's, where it's been placed. So we think that the simulations that are provided kind of give everyone a sense for what it looks like. It's hard to do these from everywhere because everybody has a different view from their yard or from some intersection that they think. But if they can see the tank, we think that the existing simulation we've provided gives them enough information to understand what it will look like. Of course, if there is any other additional information that the planning board is interested in having, we'll, we will make sure that we get you that information. Um, there was also a sound report submitted. From my review of that, I don't think the report suggested that our conclusions were wrong. There was more concerns about the presentation and the, the, the scope and the level of detail that was associated with that. We think that the sound report shows that the, the site complies with your standards and these fans that are replacing the big HVAC units are quite small and don't emit noise that's above and beyond what our expert concluded was just the regular background noise of a residential neighborhood. Um, but we will provide the abutter sound report to our engineer and ask him to do a response so that you have the benefit of, of his response to any of the, the specific uh, concerns or questions that were raised in that report. And I think the final issue that came up had to do with our soils waiver. I think the, the, as we had noted in the application, the reason why the planning board asked for this information in, in site plan review is because there may be geotechnical issues with foundation construction. And there's certainly every time you do a subsurface wastewater treatment system, you have to do this kind of assessment to make sure that the soils perk so that you could proceed with your project. Um, I think the suggestion had been made that because the Portland Water District is in the midst of some lead soil remediation at the site that's being overseen by the DEP, that Verizon Wireless should do some baseline studies. Respectfully, we don't think that that's something that's really part of this proceeding. We understand, or I understand from conversations about a year ago with the Water District, that as a public utility, they had agreed to do a remediation and that the DEP is overseeing that project. Uh, when it comes time, if we get through this process and get our permit, that we will be painting the tank, we will obviously be subject to any kind of ongoing conditions or requirements that the DEP has placed on the site. But we think that that's an issue that um, is being kind of regulated and overseen by the main DEP um, and wouldn't be something that would be part of, of this process as well. We can certainly get from the water district what the status is of that cleanup. Um, and, and make sure that they send that information to us or to you so that you know. But again, we think that's not an issue for completeness for the review that you're doing under your ordinance, and that's just more of an issue between the DEP and the Portland Water District as to how they're proceeding with that project. So um, 
that, I think, is my kind of summary of, of all the stuff that has been presented to you. And Chip and I are here to answer any questions that you may have or that pop up in the public comment. <clears throat> Thank you. We um, and will certainly look to you again after the public comment has, has occurred. Do any board members have questions at this point that would help the public um, in advance of the public comment, Henry? Yes, looking at that, uh, that drawing up there, the box with the, uh, with the three units in it. Yes. Um, the tower, I assume, is empty. That's correct. Why, is, why would you not put that, sorry, why would yeah. you not slide that up inside the tower? Well, partially for structural reasons, we don't want to cut into the existing tower. It's a steel sheet thing, and the support within it is kind of part of the exterior of the tank. And also, it's steel, so um, there is going to be condensation. There is going to be kind of environmental conditions inside that tank that are really very bad for the electronic equipment in the cabinets. Even with venting and the like, um, the, the kind of... Uh, atmosphere and such inside the tank is very detrimental to the equipment. Um, so what we've tried to do instead is, is dramatically minimize the footprint of the equipment, um, but to install it outside, like per the specs of the equipment in a way that Verizon Wireless does for these pr other projects so that the equipment will continue to work. But if you had put it in the tower, it would be a lot quieter, correct? It well, wouldn't kill any noise. Well, actually, I think what, and we can go into greater detail um, as you need to with the sound report, but the sound emitting from the fans, which are the things that are running all the time, is going to is not going to be um, something that you're going to be able to hear behind the property lines. It's it's consistent with the ambient background noise of just leaves rustling and cars driving by and people outside doing what they're I, doing. I um, guess my question is, if it's strong enough to support a thousand gallons of water or two thousand gallons of water, I don't think cutting a little bit of it would have made much difference. No, it, you're right. I mean, it, so structurally, I don't think that that, that would be. And, and you talk about condensation. I mean, if you, uh, if you had it vented to the outside, inside, through the, the wall, I can't really see that that would be too bad. I mean, it seems to be okay for, I mean, if you had venting to the outside through the, through the, through the door that you had to cut in it, I can't see that that would be such a terrible problem, but I would like to see some figures on that. Just so I believe, I believe, and this might not be the case, that the people surrounding it are a little bit concerned about additional equipment going onto it and making it look a little bit more industrial. So if it was, if it was hidden inside the unit itself, I think that would take away most of that. Well, it, it wouldn't look as if there was anything there because you're just putting a couple of aerials on the top. Um, that's, you know, that, that, okay. that's my question, really. I mean, and I, what, I'll, what I'll probably do is go back to the engineers and, and ask them to give a little more detail about the issue of putting it inside and what challenges might come with that, and then we can present that to you. Right. What we've tried to do is to, you know, as we've noted, minimize the size and then surround this with a wooden fence so that you won't really be able to see any of it. Um, and, and I guess the question ultimately is, if you do it that way and you make it look nice with a fence and you've got some trees around it, um, what is the need to shift it? But I will talk to the, the, the Verizon folks about that option and try to get you some more information Just, just on one more comment. Sure. I mean, if you did put it inside and paint, paint the unit, effectively, you've not, changed the, you've not changed the site whatsoever. Effectively, all you've done is painted the tower because all they could see would be painted tower if the equipment was put inside the tower. Well, and the antennas, and, and this... Well, the antennas, yes, but, the, but as explained during the workshop, the angle in which you're looking up to see the top of the antennas would be minimal. So, I mean, you'd have a couple of feet of, of uh, a couple of steel rods mm -hmm. sticking up effectively. So, I mean, I think that would reduce some of the worries that some of the people around have. Okay. Well, I definitely appreciate the question. Let me try to get some more information on, on that as an option and what kind of challenges would exist. So thank you very much for the, thank you. For the thought. Any other comments before the public comment period, Jonathan? Um, looking at C3.
I, I see that you have written down here an eight foot tall wooden uh, wood stockade fence, but there's nothing with regards to um, the ice shield or the ice canopy above it on how high that's going to be. I mean, I don't know if that's drawn to scale. If it is, it's a scale, but we can get you the. Uh, All right. So. Yeah. So it would be about three feet. Another three feet higher. Okay. So it's about eleven feet. That's correct. All right. Do you know how that existing? Um, building that's already there I don't think that's in any of it I think it's in what you gave us at the beginning but the height of the existing building right excuse me the height of that actually is given on C5 oh it is construction. Uh, 10 oh I see that the height of the of the ice Roof, yes, yeah. is in the upper right hand corner, 10 foot 6 inches. Six. Okay. It appears to be to the bottom of the beam, so maybe there's an additional. Is that to the top? Okay. And top of slab. And how, how tall is the slab? About 6 inches off the ground? That is. It is. So if you can tell me this. Oh, 12 foot concrete pad. I think that's also on C5. 12 inches. Yep. Yes, over on the left hand side, foot. concrete pad foundation, 12 inches on top of six inches of compacted gravel. All right, the other, uh, I had another question. <laughs> with regards to painting um, the structure, the experience that I've had with regards to lead paint, this is something that one of the abutters brought up that you just mm -hmm. addressed also. Um, a lot of times that if lead paint doesn't become an issue until it's exposed or basically someone tries to chip it, chip it away and a lot of times, a lot of old houses, there's lead paint that's basically painted over and as long as it's painted over, it doesn't become an issue. Is it your understanding that part of your agreement with the Portland Water District is that you're painting over the tower? Does that have anything to do with any lead paint issue on that being the reason that you're painting it over? It's not why we're painting it over. That was really done as an aesthetic and a maintenance item. You know, it was kind of a negotiated part of the lease. If you let us come on, they were like, look, you know, we want you to paint it too. And that in the back and forth, we ultimately agreed to paint the tower. So it was more just, it'll be better, reduce the rust, you know, better long life for the tower. And obviously, aesthetically, we thought it would be much better than putting the antennas on the existing did the, did the DEP issue that in Portland Water District, obviously you're not part of the Portland Water District, well, yeah. I assume you're not, but um, did that ever come up with in your negotiations at all with regards to this ongoing issue with the lead paint and? No, it didn't. I mean, what I think happened, and I talked to um, the inside general counsel and some of the operations folks at the Water District, some of the abutters had raised a question about the paint and the status of the paint. Um, under Maine law, if this were in Massachusetts, this is, creates many more issues. But in Maine, there's we're, no... We're thankful we're not in Massachusetts. That's right, for many, many reasons. So in, um, so in Maine, there isn't actually a separate independent lead standard like there is. But I think what happened was the, the water district is a public utility. It services the public. It's kind of going above and beyond what is legally required. And um, they went and did some testing, found that there was some lead um, in the soil adjacent to the tank, and so they agreed to do a soil remediation um, in conjunction with some sort of review by the DP. And that, that happened uh, really a long time after we had signed the lease and a long time before we came before the town and, and right. where all this started up. Um, you know, there will be some final sign-off by the DP on their remediation, and um, so if and when we show up on the site, we'll have to make sure we get a copy of that and we know whatever it is that the DP required. Um, but, the, but the repainting wasn't to encapsulate the lead. It was just to kind of lengthen the life of the tank and deal with the aesthetic issue. Okay. So, um, do you, and you don't know the, the status of the Portland I, Water District with the DEP? I don't, but I'll, I, will, I will check and plan right. on reporting about at least what I can find out. Because I, I, th I think you're correct on, well, from my view of it, the, the ordinance doesn't really go into these issues. Usually the soil... Uh, studies done when, like you said, it has to do with a wastewater or runoff or something along those issues. But in this case, I, to me, if, and I know this probably isn't the reason, or what you just stated, this isn't the reason that you are repainting the tower, but in a way it almost becomes a, a sort of a live issue if that does happen and, and you are encapsulating the, the lead paint in there and it doesn't run off. Um, so the issue of having a baseline on that, I, I think, is something that the board may want to discuss, or something to flag and something to discuss. But 
I mean, I think what, what, what we'd propose to do is kind of try to figure out from the water district what their plan is with the DEP and what the DEP is looking for as far as a final conclusion. And then obviously we'll make sure that we're complying with that. And then kind of based on that information, you can kind of figure out whether you have enough or whether there's some yeah, additional. I think, I think for me that would be valuable information okay. to, to have. Right, we'll inquire and pull that, pull that update together. And, and had we known that that was an issue, I probably would have asked that at the yeah. workshop to have that before tonight. But Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions before the public speaks? And we'll have further chance to ask questions after. I, one little one. The generators run by diesel, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And what's the size? There's an, an internal undermounted tank that holds the diesel, and it's 50? 50 gallon double wall tank as part of the unit. So there's no separate tank. On well, the unit itself. So it's not an off, off, That's correct. It's not an off the pad uh, storage. That's correct. Oh, and then, OK. Yeah, so that and that's all contained within kind of the enclosure, um, including the tank. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, if there are no immediate questions from the board, I think we'll open the um, public comment part of the meeting. Uh, the, the general rules of the game are if you'd come one at a time up to the podium, uh, give your name, address. Uh, Try to confine your uh, comments to three minutes. We'll be a little flexible, but to give everybody a chance to, to speak and not be here all night, we'd really appreciate it if you keep it to three minutes. Um, and uh, so, there we go. Oh, excuse me, one thing, just repeat again. We're talking about completeness now. We're not arguing the pros and cons of the application. We're trying to decide, essentially, do we have enough information to go forward with the analysis as to whether the, the site plan approval should be granted. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Curry, members of the board. <clears throat> My name is Pavel Darling. I live at 9 Avon Road. It's the <clears throat> closest abutting residence to the water tank. Um, and I submitted written comments, so <clears throat> I will definitely try and keep this brief. But uh, specifically on the issue of, of lead, uh, I have two small children. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue for us as we try and figure out what is going on uh, with lead at the water tank. Um, and so my comments that I provided written in, in response to some of the discussion are really just to try and make sure that we have the information in front of us as we discuss what is going to happen at this site. Uh, and so I requested, and, and we'll certainly defer to the judgment of the board, of course, um, that, that a, a baseline soil survey be conducted just to ensure that we know where we're starting from. In addition, it, you know, a lot of what's coming out here is information that we're going to gather as we go along the route. Um, and so as it relates to the issue of completeness, for my sake, I would like to know what is going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how to the extent that there is going to be work or workers or any sort of activity on a site where there is currently exposed lead paint that is very, very close to my house, I would like to know how that's going to be dealt with, when it's going to be dealt with, and how it relates to Verizon's application. So I'm, you know, kind of certainly going to defer to the board on exactly how to do that, but that's in some sense my, my big concern here, and I just would like to make sure that we have that information as the board you know, reviews the plan, reviews kind of what's going on, and, and, and tries to come up with a solution that, that really kind of makes sure that, that we are protected in some sense. Uh, so that was my main concern. One other just small point as it relates to the uh, fuel source for the generator. Um, the polar generator, I do also believe, uh, has a propane version of that generator, uh, which as I understand it is actually quieter. So there may be uh, some information there as it relates to specs uh, about the generator that the board would be interested in knowing about the difference between diesel versus propane, uh, just as a, as a final comment. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Brad Kaufman, and I live at one Avon Road, and I also submitted written comments, and so I'll just try to touch on those quickly. The, the thrust of my written comments was about additional information to assist the planning board in evaluating the visual impact associated with the antennas and the fiberglass 
shrouds. The photo simulation that Verizon has provided is from the perspective of Avon Road. As I'm sure you all know, Trundy Road is far more heavily traveled than is Avon Road. And so my suggestion would be to ask Verizon to provide a photo simulation from the Trundy Road perspective. In fact, Trundy, from Trundy Road, the, the water tower is, is quite visible. I, I actually have a photograph, and I wonder if I might provide you with copies of the photograph so that you can see. I have full sure. color if you're, if you, may I? Sure, thank you. Thank you. John passing it, sure. Yeah, can I grab one for? I can share one. That's right. Do you want one to? I, I can't tell for sure, but my, my sense from the drawings that Verizon has provided is that from Trundy Road, one would see a face-on perspective of the fiberglass shrouds, the Avon Road perspective, given the placement of the antenna shrouds, one sees them from the side and, and I, my suggestion is that it would be helpful to be able to see the, the shroud face on, and I think the Trundy Road perspective would provide that. So that was one suggestion that I made. The other, me, this is the Trundy Road? That, is, that picture was taken from Trundy Road yesterday. The second suggestion that I would offer is, is, to, is for the board to ask Verizon to provide photographs of what, the, of what real shrouds actually look like in the real world so that the board can get a better sense of how well they actually blend or not with the, with the support structure. And ideally, such photographs would be taken after some period of time so that the board could see the visual impact after some period of aging and weathering to see to what degree the shrouds are obvious or not. After, after some period of time has, has passed. So from a, from a visual impact perspective, those are the, the two things that I, would, that I would request or suggest. As, as far as noise is concerned, and I, I don't know if this, I, I hope this doesn't cross the line. May I make one more thought? Sure. <clears throat> if this crosses the line into merits, then I, then I apologize. But the, the noise report that that Mr. Ambrose provided does in fact question whether or not the equipment will meet the noise limits at the property line, the 45 and the 55 decibels. And so I, I, his conclusion was that Verizon had not provided enough information to be able to reach that, to be able to reach that conclusion. Now perhaps Verizon will address that with the follow-up report. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, sure, if you'd like to. Uh... <laughs> that should do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Anthony Armstrong. I'm a resident of 32 Lawson Road, Cape Elizabeth. And uh, I've been following this thing very closely. Um, early on, I was representing my sister-in-law, Priscilla Armstrong, who's an abutter. And I still am working with her, but she also has an, an attorney from a law firm now working with her. And I, so we don't confuse things. I, I am an attorney, but I'm not representing her in that litigation and I, I wanted to clarify that I'm speaking really even though we agree on things I think I'm, I'm speaking for myself tonight um, my, my comments really focus on two areas number one I guess I can summarize it by saying this to most of us who have been involved here there's kind of two big elephants in the room that haven't been discussed that much one is the responsibility of the Portland Water District and I, I could be wrong on this, and I apologize, and perhaps the chair could ask Verizon, but my understanding was, when I read the lease some time ago, that 
the water district was responsible for preparing the surface and painting the surface of the tank as Verizon came forward, or at least Verizon was responsible for maintaining that surface over time. And perhaps we could get a clarification of to that tonight. If indeed the water district has some responsibility for this surface preparation, i.e. Uh, somehow dealing with the, the lead surface that's there, we all know about at this point, um, the lead paint surface, uh, then my th thought and my request would be that the water district be involved in this application to the point where it told us what it was doing either as part of the initial startup here or over time. So that's question number one. Question number two in terms of completeness is um, it, it's, we, we all know that uh, AT&T is going to be coming forward with an application. They came early on in the process. They have a lease for which they've been paying monthly fees right now, and it's ongoing. Uh, at least the water district records show that. So they're coming forward. So where this links in with the site plan review is, as I see it, um, under section 19812-1A, the zoning ordinance requires uh, for co-location co situations that, quote, providers shall provide a mechanism for the construction and maintenance of co-located antennas and infrastructure and should provide a reasonable sharing of cost in accordance with industry standards. So Verizon knows they're coming. The Water District knows they're coming. We all know they're coming. They're probably going to be followed by one or two others who will try to co-locate there. That's the big issue. And uh, there's been nothing submitted here that has to do with any of that kind of coordination. And lastly, just a couple of comments on things I learned here tonight. Number one, uh, just for reference, there is a water tank down in Old Orchard near the fire department, uh, like the main fire department down there, that has the equipment inside the tank. I just comment that, and perhaps Chip is aware of that, but uh, it's not unprecedented. Um, secondly, in terms of the the visual perspectives that Brad Coppin was talking about, I noticed tonight that uh, Scott Anderson mentioned that the, the photo simulation that he's provided has, and I quote, I think I got this right, sh shows the simulation, quote, from different places. And uh, I don't think it does show it from different places. That's the point. We need to see it from different places. So that concludes my comments on completeness. and. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Sarah McCall for Avon Road. Thank you for your time, as always. Um, just one comment about the completeness of the application. Um, I've been a resident at 4 Avon since, for 33 years, so I'm the oldest person on the street with regards to how long I've been there. So I've seen everything longer than anybody else, I think. I'm actually 100 years old, and so. Um, the one item that I wish was in the application is just a recognition that this site actually is also an abutter to a um, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust um, easement. I'm, I'm unsure of my term, whether it's even, it's the Turkey Hill Farm area, which is a town property, a community property. And all I wanted to mention was that I, as an abutter, um, want my residents to, be, to hold its value, but also we as a community should want our land trust properties to hold their value. So I see nowhere in Verizon's application where it says, we would like to make sure that everybody that ventures into this area isn't accosted by this structure, and therefore, we are taking as much responsibility as we can for low noise and low um, visual impact. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Anybody else in the uh, public would like to be heard tonight? Okay, there being no more, we'll close the public comment uh, part of the. Uh, meeting and return to the board having a chance to discuss among ourselves and 
uh, with the applicant, any questions that have arisen from the public comment or anything else that you'd like to like to raise? How do you want to do it? Do you want us to ask questions, or do you want him to respond to some of the comment first? I, I could do a brief response. That's good, thank you, Carolyn. That's probably a good idea. If, you, if you'd like to handle as much of what you heard sure. as you think would be useful, and then, then we can, can whatever follow up. We'll fill in from there. I mean, I think what we're trying to do for completeness is to look at the requirements in your ordinance for the application requirements, and we went through that in the application. So I, I think that the other thing that happens is. Um, regardless of whether requests or inquiries from board members or members of the public are specifically relevant to any of the performance standards, what we like to try to do is to collect as much information as possible and get it out there so we can be as responsive as possible. You know, if, if there's something that we don't think is relevant, you, you can be certain I'll do my lawyer thing and say, well, I don't think this is relevant, but hey, we wanted to be responsive. So I think some of the information about the status of the Portland Water District's activities with the DEP, we will try to collect that information, but I don't think that's actually part of what we're giving you because neither the DEP or the Water District are applicants or part of this proceeding. Um, we can provide some additional information on on what the DBAs are for gas for a generator. It's about two DBA and the generator we don't think is subject to the sound, but you know what, we're going to get you the information on that anyway. Um, and um, um, so some of the things that have come up, our plan is to go ahead and collect that information and to get it out there so that you and the public can see it. Um, but I think for purposes of completeness, so we can kind of move on and do a more formal presentation and hear the public comment on the, on the merits, uh, respectfully, we think that we've given you a complete application and, and we appreciate that even after the public hearing, if the members of the public raise questions and you have questions and you need additional information, that's not the end of the process and we have to keep kind of feeding you what you need to do your job. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's unlikely that there's going to be any participation by the Water District and AT&T. The Water District is just a landlord. I have no idea what AT&T is doing. They were part of this in the beginning and they've kind of disappeared and I'm not sure what they can do. I'm, uh, we, you know, I'm not sure we can get that kind of information, nor do I think it's really helpful to the, what your task is. Um, but again, we will try to figure out what's going on with the water district. So um, our ears are open in this process. We try to collect and disseminate as much information as we can um, to help you understand. We think we've designed a site that is going to be small and quiet and from a visual standpoint will be very, very minimal. And we can talk a little bit more about that when we do the full presentation at the public hearing. But we respectfully request that you find us complete and allow us to move on to the next stage um, where we'll continue to give you as much information as we can. And um, any questions you have, uh, we're certainly here to answer them right now. So thank you. Carolyn. I'm going to take my questions to the relative to, to uh, Portland Water District. And okay. I do agree with you that to a degree that mm -hmm. water Water District has what they need to do, but I think I think your plan needs to acknowledge that the Water District needs to do some work. Uh, it talks in there's on C5. It's mentioned that soil may need to be removed if the if the Water District has not done their work. When you put your pad in, you have to remove soil. I would hope that the contractor doing that is aware of the fact that they have contaminated contaminated soils and their disposal needs to be according to a specific standard. Mm -hmm. And so I think acknowledgement of that so that people are aware and um, are very cognizant that they need to make sure that DEP has done their job before they can just willy-nilly haul stuff off site. Mm -hmm. um, and also the same thing is relative to the painting, um, that what has the Portland Water District done because the thing that was mentioned about painting in the report that I read had to do with dust in the air during the painting scraping process. So, so does the painting contractor know that this is an issue and there's no indication on that plan which is S1 that there's the potential of lead paint and that any remediation would need to be looked into by the contractor. Or I didn't notice any. If I'm wrong, please tell me. I, I didn't notice any in my reading, but those are two big concerns for me, and I think the plan should acknowledge that potential. But can I comment? Mm. But 
at the present moment, nothing's being done. So the thing is leaching and peeling and going into the ground. So somebody has to do something or it'll get worse. Well, there's no issue with something's going to be done by either Verizon or Portland Water District. The thing is, when it is done, you don't hire a painting contractor and not give them the information they need to do it in an appropriate manner. So it's making sure that that information is on the plan. Yeah, and we will, we will make sure that we know. I mean, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of construction, there's a, um, a site meeting uh, with the landlord you know, before any construction takes place. And, which, and par part of the reason for that meeting is to get an update from the landlord on any changes in conditions. Have they put any water lines in recently? Is there anything that we have to worry about? And that would certainly be part of that. Here's where we are with the DEP process. We're not allowed to touch that dirt. Um, if you do this, you know, you can go here, but you can't go here, and that kind of stuff would definitely be part of it. And, um, but I think what's important is that we're, you know, our, our, what we're doing is the insulation of the new stuff and the new paint. The, the water district has got an arrangement with the DEP where they're doing what we're doing. We're going to make sure we're coordinated and that you can see that we're coordinated. Um, it's just kind of important to us because we don't have any control over what the DP and the Oh, I understand that. But we'll make sure that the two puzzle pieces fit together and we can show that. There was no, re I guess I'm looking for recognition that there are yeah. puzzle pieces to fit okay, together. Okay, good. Can I, can I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just try, try to help you understand a little bit better how seriously Verizon Wireless takes us. Um, before we even lease the property, part of our due diligence is to run phase one on every property. And phase one is just that general screening. What's the hygiene of the property? And nine times out of ten, a water tank's going to have lead on it. And every painting contractor out there knows that if it's an old water tank, it's going to have lead on it. And when I walk onto a site, I know that my environmental uh, compliance officer, who's responsible for from Maine down to Virginia, she's going to say, you need to prepare a soils management plan for our contractors. So whoever the winning bidder is knows that, hey, I've, and they know it as well. Water tank, there's probably soil in the ground. How much soil needs to be excavated? Well, we're talking about a 10 foot by 16 foot area. Chances are they may not have to take any soil off site, but if they do, there'll be a manifest. All the workers will know what's going on. Waste management will be hired to deal with it. This is uh, business as usual for us. Uh, so it, it's, uh, we, one of the, and yeah. about the tank itself and painting the tank, um, Verizon Wireless, of course, as you've seen in the lease, we're required to assist in the payment of the tank. Uh, that's not something we're taking, uh, we're not getting our hands dirty with it. We can't install on the tank until the water district is completed with the painting project. The painting needs to be done. They said, well, geez, it doesn't make a lot of sense for you to install and then have to deinstall at some point so we can paint it. That was one of the stipulations in the lease anyhow. So. so that's Portland separate. Water District is responsible for painting. The That's tank. right. That's right. We're not. We don't. We are responsible for ongoing maintenance. Writing after. a check and onge ongoing maintenance we're, afterwards. We're That's right. Pay, we're going to yeah. pay the cost. That was the business right. term. We're going to pay for their painting costs. Right. So the painting of the tank really, we're showing it to you because at the end of the day, we know it's going to be done. It's going to look a whole lot better because it'll be painted. We're not putting a brush on the tank. For those who are concerned about the painting process on the tank. I would welcome you to go online and see just what, it, what goes into remediation of paint on a tank. There's staging and uh, canopies, just like they do in bridge work on the highways. It's the same idea. When, they've, when they clear a tank or clear bridging of commercial grade paint, which has lead in it, it's the same process. Um, Could you summarize what has been done so far with nothing, respect to the painting? Nothing's been done. The testing, uh, uh, no painting, uh, the testing, the soil testing? I've got, I've got no idea what's been done on not, the soil. Not by us yet. Yeah. That's that, Portland Water uh, District. And we'll right. figure out yeah. what the Water District has done thus right. far. That's fine. Yeah. And we can get you some more of the details on the stuff that Chip is talking about with regard to the protocols and the procedures when this gets done so that you have you know, he talks and, and I, I sure. don't dispute that this is business as usual for you it is not business as usual for yes. us right and so making assumptions that something is going to occur is is not a good thing not good great all right we'll get you the details to fill in those assumptions Jonathan. And I echo Carol Ann's concern with that because you are asking us to waive one of the guidelines of the ordinance that we look at in determining whether or not an applicant uh, is in compliance with what we have to as a board um, make sure that 
basically balances the property owner's rights and the pub and what's good for the public. Now I commend you both from where where you came from the workshop to what you're presenting now. You listened to some of the concerns that the board had and you made adjustments and I, I commend you for that. Um, I have concerns though with regards to what you're asking us to waive with the soil requirement and I understand this is more probably on Portland Water District's radar than yours but I'd like to hear something before I can say that this is complete and I am okay with waiving this requirement I really kind of want to know what the status is of what's going on with Port Water District and the Department of Environmental Protection I understand that you guys might not have much to do with that yeah, what's, the, but what's the purpose of the soils analysis you asking me the question yeah. well I, I in the, in the because when you have to well that's let's see it let's see what the concern when you say that there's going to be there might be some sort of an um, you have to remove some soil to put that platform. I know you guys are going to put trees in, which is great. But we, we'd like to see that, I'd like to see something along those lines. Just the status of where it is with the DEP and Portland Water District. The status or you want us to actually do the soils analysis? I, I don't know if a soils analysis has to be done. Yeah, if it, that's it, the requirement, right, that we're being asked to meet. Well, I, you're, no, asking to actually, waive, you're asking to waive that. That's right. That's right. Exactly. It's typically, and, that's for wastewater systems, right? Well, there's a lot of things that that can be asked for. And then, but when, we, when it comes down to asking for it to be waived, and there's a concern that there's new information out there that we just received from an abutter, that there's lead paint, that there's a concern that there's some sort of thing going on between the Portland Water District, the DEP, and now, I mean, you guys are going to be a tenant. You're, we're just finding out that your landlord is operating a site that might be toxic to the neighbors. I mean, to me, that would be a concern for you guys. But and we've dealt with that. Yeah. yeah. Right. You've dealt with it, but we don't know the information that you've dealt with, and so we would like to know a little bit more information before we go ahead and waive a requirement that you're asking us to. That's that's my concern mm -hmm. when it comes to completeness. Can Can I interject? Can we get Maureen to clarify um, submission requirement eight? A medium intensity soil survey what exactly that would normally consist of right so so the, unfortunately lead is not something that the planning board typically gets involved in I mean it's something that's regulated at the state level the soils the soil information that is typically required by the planning board is used to determine whether or not there are wetlands on the site or if um, you're going to install a subsurface wastewater disposal system and you look for suitability. So I think the confusion is that I thought you had received it, Scott, that there is a letter from the Department of Environmental Protection that was sent to the Portland Water District dated January 7, 2015, and that was provided to the planning board by um, Pavel Darling. Mm -hmm. And that letter actually has a fairly detailed soil analysis in it that was conducted by, um, hang on, Northeast Test Consultants. So if you go to the, the letter that was submitted to the planning board, and I, I did forward it, and I know Carol Ann has a copy, um, dated February 17th. And included in that is a November 19, 2014 letter from Northeast Test Consultants to Roger Paradis at the Water District where they actually did do testing for lead and submitted those tests to the DEP. And then the DEP has prepared basically a plan for how the lead on the site would be remediated and specifically said that um, if remediation was done on the soils before the tank was cleaned and painted, then they would have to go back and retest the soils after they painted it. Um, and if they didn't, if they cleaned and painted the, the tank first, then they would have to go back and test the soils to see if they had been successful with their remediation. But, and um, they is the Portland Water District? Well, I, I think the comment made that it's important to tie these pieces together in the planning board approval is, is probably a very, very good idea just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, but it does seem like there is pretty significant amount of test data already. We, this is usually more than we usually, I mean, this, my point is that 
the, the test data provided by Northeast test is much better than what we would get in a medium intensity soil survey. And my apologies for missing that. I know there were a, a number of comments that came in and I thought I had caught all of them, but we somehow I had missed them. Does that not have a, a fairly clear follow-up obligation it was, to the DEP to yes, remediate the soil? Post I, I, it seemed very clear to me. But um, in terms of judging completeness, it seems like that's something we could push off to after completeness and just say that we want that integrated in the whole package. Condition of approval. I agree with that. Okay. Be, um, in my in my questions about the soil and paint, in no way was I expecting you guys to do the testing. The testing has been done. It's been mm -hmm. done for Portland Water District. Portland Water District has been given marching orders by DEP. Portland Water District has not followed through. So they're doing a disservice to you guys as well, right, well by well. not following through. But we, that's something that's, I think, important for us to know about okay. as we go through this process. And I in no way, uh, I, am, I have no problem with waiving the soil test requirement for, for you guys. That's not, that's not an issue for me because I think I think this DEP, this Portland Water District report, covers the important part of that. And, and my apologies again for missing that in the comments, but and we will make sure we, I haven't talked to the Water District about this since the process began, but we will get a sense from them on timing and scope and get make sure we have those documents and that you have all of their documents so that um, you know what's going on on the site and you've got that information. Other Comments, um, Jonathan? I, I would assume that there's going to be a uh, site walk. Yes. With regards to this. Yes. No, it's, that's uh, once we get through our discussion and going forward, we'll, one of the things we'll do is schedule a site walk. I mean, my, my thought would be to put off the vote for completeness after the site walk. And many times we have, as a board, done complete, had a vote on completeness and a vote on the merits on an application on the same night. But I would not be in favor of that for this right. particular project. Okay. But my, my view is that I, I would like to um, put off the completeness vote till after. Um, I might be in the minority on that, but after a site walk on that. I, I join you in that. I think you're right. I think we ought to have a site walk I, I, completeness. And one of the issues is I'd like to know more about this DEP and Portland Water District. And like Caroline said, I, I don't think this is on you guys, but I think you're dealing with the landlord yeah, here. That's, that's just right there. It's not quite on us. And you've got <laughs> you got your checklist here. <laughs> you know, here it is. Uh, what do you what do you think? Like the timing of site walk and I mean, I mean, obviously the issue with completeness is just to keep the proceeding going. I, I don't know when when would the site walk be? Let's, is let's take these things one at a time. All right. Okay. Um, yes, site walk. Before we get around to scheduling that, and before we take a vote on completeness or not, are there any more questions we have for the applicant or discussion points that we would like to make among the board? I think I've made my points clear, so. Joe? Okay. Carolyn? No, I think they've got their questions on the, the noise, and they've already said they're going to offer more information on that, um, and then the whole my water only, district issue. <laughs> sorry, my only comment was that I, Sorry. My only comment is I would have liked to have heard an answer about moving the equipment inside the tower before it was complete or not as to whether you have to build a concrete pad or not. So that's my comment. Okay. My own views on completeness, um, the, it is a checklist approach for the most part. Uh, the checklist, I, I think, has been satisfied to the point where we can have a site walk and then have a reasonable discussion on the merits. Um, Henry's point on, uh, I don't know if our job is to force a redesign of the, of the facility, which is what I think you're talking about. Well, no, we don't have the authority to say it should be in the tank well, no, or out I, of the tank. No, I'm on about the noise level, you know, because if, yeah. if you put the equipment inside the tower, you do away with the noise level. Well, uh, to be sure, so, but we, we, have, we have an engineering report from these folks. We have another engineering report. These go to the merits. The, the subject agree, has been addressed. complete as far as the application, but, you know, obviously there's merits that would, in my view, need to be discussed. But I may be in a minority there. 
Um, let's take the other easy one. When can folks do a sidewalk? Before we get to the whether we vote in completeness uh, tonight or at the next meeting. Um, are you folks in a, uh, do you have any sense of urgency about getting this done? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Typically you do the sidewalk before the submission deadline for the next meeting. Which is? Is this Friday. So you got to, I mean, we'll, we can massage the submission deadline a little, but sooner rather than later is usually preferred. Based on the weather forecast, tomorrow would be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'd be available Saturday. I mean, yeah. Well, and we're available anytime it works for the board. Um, Saturday um, would work. Saturday's fine. Can you miss early. the thing so that the Saturday yes, would work? Absolutely. Absolutely. You folks available Saturday morning? Early. Early? 7 30? 7 30? 7 30? Sure. Okay. 7 30. 7 30 Saturday morning yeah, at the site? Yes. Yes. So okay. February 27th? Uh, yes. That was 7.30 on yes. Saturday? Yes. Yes. And we meet on Avon Road. Yeah. Avon at the driveway into the facility. Is that Okay, the, perfect. Does that make sense? Yep, that works. Okay, now on the, uh, on the subject of completeness, you know, the choices are do we vote yay or nay tonight, or do we simply table it until the next meeting, at which point the merits could also be included. I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, Caroline, you said you favored voting on it this evening? I have no issue with completeness. Yeah. Uh, I, I share your view myself. Do you guys? I have no issue. Okay. You and Henry would prefer to, um, prefer to defer it. Um, I think we have. I think we need a motion on a vote. Yeah, we do. No, I, that, that's coming up. But I, I mean, I've said my piece. I can yeah. reiterate it. But we can talk about it some more if you like, or we can simply have a vote on it. No. And do we have a, a, a motion that somebody would like to make? Caroline? Motion for completeness. Be it ordered based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Verizon Wireless for site plan review to install wireless antennas on the existing water tower located 11 Avon Road and to construct a 10 by 16 foot <laughs> uh, concrete pad at the base of the tower to support equipment cabinets and a generator be deemed complete. So motion is seconded. Any discussion on the seconded motion? Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Motion carries three to two. Uh, Maureen, we will plan to have a public hearing and a vote on the merits on the 15th. Is that second? Uh, That's the second motion. The second motion is waiting. And you shouldn't make that motion until you're done with discussion of this item for this evening. Of okay. the complete no the, the second motion the mm -hmm. motion to table this and schedule a public hearing for next month All right you should not make that motion until you're done discussing that for the evening done discussing what this item anything anything about anything about, anything about the Verizon application okay since we've just uh, approved completeness could you help me out what, what? some the board has the opportunity to have I mean you know, you, you kind of leaked over the line a little bit, but technically there's supposed to be only a discussion of completeness. Mm -hmm. Now that you've deemed it complete, you can talk about anything. You can have any kind of substantive discussion you want to have. Mm -hmm. And then at the close of discussion, there should be a motion to table the item <coughs> and scheduling a public hearing for next month. Okay. It's, I, I think I, <laughs> the, the dividing line between uh, completeness and, and substance is, is fuzzy indeed. Uh, would the board care to talk at all at this time about anything beyond what we've already discussed? Going into the merits of the application, anything else that you would like to see, that you'd like to tell the applicant to uh, make you more comfortable about deciding? I think the applicant knows what I would be comfortable with having for the next meeting, so I'm not going to say it again. So. And we'll try, uh, Maureen, did you say this Friday? is a submission. Why don't we talk tomorrow? <clears throat> okay. What we will try to do is get this information, all the stuff we've talked about, in as quickly as possible, and as much of it as we can get in before the site walk on Saturday, we could 
bring that with us um, if folks my, wanted to My recommendation it? would be that if you can do it to make a formal application on Monday. Okay. And that um, anything you can discuss for information at the site walk. We'll be ready could to bring up, it. you know, for example, if someone has asked about, you know, where the lead is and you know where it is, you can walk on the site and say this is where we think it is, okay. but any formal submission would be coming in on Monday. Okay. All right. We'll try to get as much responsive information by the site walk that we can. Peter. One other issue, too, is that I think that there was a sound study that was provided by one of them, the abutters, and you said that you were going to submit that to uh, your basically sound guy, your yes. expert. Um, I don't know if he's going to have a turnaround time by the applicant, but it would be great to see what his response would be to that study. I was, I was wondering the same thing. I don't know if, I, don't know if, if I, I think if you pressed him, he probably could, but I'm, I'm half wondering if we shouldn't give it to Sebago Technics, the town's engineer. Oh, yeah. Do you have, do they do that sound stuff for you? Why don't you know, we talk it's, tomorrow it's, about okay. going back and forth and, you know. All right, I'll, I'll, I will can yeah. give you a call tomorrow morning. I do not believe there is a sound engineer at Sebago Technics, but we can verify that. Okay. okay. Let's. Yep. <laughs> but we'll, we'll press them timing wise and try to get. That'd be great. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot. Do you have a checklist of the things you've been asked to follow up? <coughs> on? Just to make yes. Sure that, so everybody knows what you're gonna follow up on. We're gonna uh, first we're gonna uh, check in with Verizon Wireless on the issue of putting the equipment in the tank. Um, we are gonna talk to the water district about the status of their uh, plans with the DEP, including timing and what their understanding is of what the ultimate resolution is supposed to be. Um, we have uh, the height of the existing shed which we're going to get you. Um, oh, yeah, uh, an issue came up about a photo. We have a photo of one uh, shroud from a water tank on Yarmouth, uh, so we will provide that to the board and to the public uh, in response to one of Brad's comments. Um, we're also going to, I'm going to get you the information on um, gas versus diesel and the, how it inf impacts the DBAs of the um, generator. Um, the diesel versus propane, propane. Pieces propane. versus propane, propane. Yeah, by gas. Yes. And I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. If, if I could ask you too on this the whole business with lead paint, if you could somehow give sort of a condensed but cogent soup to nuts about where you've been and where you're going okay. for the general understanding, because it's. It's a concept that's loaded, but I, I think it can be explained fairly uh, completely, if, if okay. you don't mind. Oh, and the other item was um, some of the specs on the construction techniques associated with repainting uh, tanks. And one other thing, um, I don't know if this was provided and just not given to the board members, but something about the specifics about the lights. We Maureen, yes, you receive that? I, I have that at which I can give to Maureen tonight and then with the understanding that if there is something different that the board would like, we're very flexible on the, on the type of fixture. The, the, the sound report that you have versus the one that Mr. Kaufman provided, you said, so I'm clear, but you're going to have your, your guy reply? Yes. In some fashion? Yes. Yeah, and I, I don't think the planning board is, wants to monitor a battle of the bands between two sound engineers, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the substantive conclusions about the sound levels at the boundary of the property can be identified. Easily, uh, yeah. Succinctly. Okay, in this table lot, form. There's a lot of data in, in his report and yours, which is a little hard to Okay, great. Yeah. Anybody else have things they'd like uh, addressed? Okay. Um, now we can know that next vote. I just have, if I can make oh, one comment. Please. There's been a lot of um, conversation back and forth about the applicant providing more information. I just want to make sure the public is aware that anything the applicant provides is going to go into a public file. Any member of the public can see it. So there's not going to be any strange stuff going on. It's all going to go through this public process. And the public is encouraged to submit other questions, comments, and whatnot over the remainder of this process. We're always really happy to hear from you. And also, and the site walk. The right? site walks have opened. Yeah, and the, yeah, site the site walk. Oh, right. The, the site walk. The public is uh, can join us at the site walk. Um, the, the the rules of the game are such that uh, we all have to, have to stay together. That you should put your questions th through the chair. We normally don't 
take questions. Well, we we do take questions. I it's, I, I don't it's, like to, but it's it's sort of like a workshop. Right. You know? It's it's more questions related to the physical characteristics of the site. Questions about, you know, what the lead levels are, or those types of things should really come through the regular meeting. Yeah, and there will be no discussion of the merits at the site walk. Okay. Uh, I think, are we done except for the uh, motion to go to the next public hearing? Yeah. All righty. Caroline, would you like to do it sure, again? Sure, I'll do that. Motion to table for public hearing. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Verizon Wireless for site plan review to install wireless antennas on the existing water tower located at 11 Avon Road and to construct a 10 foot by 16 foot concrete pad at the base of the tower to support equipment cabinets and a generator be ta tabled to the regular March 15, 2016 planning board meeting at which time a public hearing will be held. Do we have a second for that motion? Joe, thank you. Any discussion on the seconded motion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank Thanks, everyone. You thank you, folks. And we'll see you Saturday morning. Great. Last. Okay. Uh, we we haven't quite uh, we, we haven't quite adjourned. Just a second more. Um, two things. First of all, I would like to recognize and thank her for attending, Kathy Ray, who's our liaison from the town council. Thank you, Kathy, for being here. We appreciate your service. And lastly, there is an opportunity at the end of our agenda for the public to be heard on anything else that they would like to be heard about other than the Verizon application. So if anybody would like to speak, you're, this is your time. There being no takers, uh, motion to adjourn? Uh, actually, there's one motion that what, says that. I believe Joe has a motion with regards to who the chairman's going to be for. That wasn't on the agenda. Oh, it wasn't on the agenda. What was that? Oops. What was that? This is here for the. This I'll is our that. first meeting of the new year. That is true. And uh, the first item the board is supposed to handle in the first meeting of the new year is an election of chair and vice chair. All right, I have a motion to make. I move that <laughs> Peter Curry be um, chairman for uh, another term. Second. Discussion? <laughs> Sounds good to me. In favor? <laughs> now, there's a second motion of that for the vice chairman. And, right? Yes. I would like to uh, move that Carolyn Jordan have another year at the same post. <laughs> second. Second. In favor? Both motions carry unanimously. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I did notice. I meant to mention that, but, but I forgot. <laughs> now we got a motion to adjourn. Peter, motion okay, to adjourn. Okay, now we need another motion. <coughs> a motion to, we have a motion to adjourn. Second, in favor. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you for attending, folks. <laughs>